Morning. And Imogen, just take us through, if you could, the sort of sequence of events as police have said so far. I heard them a few moments ago shocked by the sheer ferocity of this attack. You know, the police are going to give a news conference uh, later on, not in the, our time here on Breakfast, but later this afternoon with more information coming out all the time. Other news now, and homeowners will be able to extend their properties without planning permission under proposals due to be announced by the government later. Yes, the changes are part of a package of measures designed to boost the construction industry and increase house building. The government says it will lead to an extra 70,000 houses being built and create 140,000 jobs. Our local government correspondent Mike Sargent is at a building site in East London for us this morning. Mike, tell us a little more. As a reminder, in a few minutes we'll be speaking to the Deputy Prime Minister Nick Clegg about those proposals. The former American President Bill Clinton has been making the case for Barack Obama's re-election in a rousing speech to the Democratic Party convention in North Carolina. Mit a couple who were arrested after they fired a shotgun at suspected intruders at their home in Leicestershire have been told they won't face charges. Police were called. The Scottish Government begins a consultation later today on plans to bring down the drink driving limit. Under the proposal, the limit. Former England cricket captain Andrew Flintoff says he's taking up professional boxing. The Ashes hero is being trained by ex featherweight world champion Barry McGuigan. Flintoff. It's uh, normal to see police officers directing traffic, isn't it? But motorists in the American state of North Carolina were surprised to see one of them breaking out some dance moves right in the middle of the road. Yes, here. <laughs> oh, it's at 10 minutes past eight. Alex will have the weather for you in about five minutes' time. And the time now, 10 minutes past eight. The government is promising to kickstart the building industry by allowing homeowners to extend their properties without planning permission, as well as giving extra help to first-time buyers. That would be for a limited time only, and they'll be removing restrictions on house builders to help get 75,000 new home building projects that have stalled starting again. Well, Nick Clegg, the Deputy Prime Minister, just talk about one of the sort of eye-catching things which certainly our audience are talking about this morning as well, uh, which is this extension to yeah. houses. How is that going to help kickstart the economy? Well, Spoken to as well, saying that it's not planning that is holding up the economy, that it's not planning which is holding up building. And we've got one from Mike saying uh, he's a director at a borough council, actually. We've given approvals for over 1,000 yeah. new homes. Few are being built. Finance is the yes. major issue. So how are you helping with that finance? Well, we, what? No, we, we were so that's how you're going to tackle, you say yeah. you're going to tackle the building. And what about getting those homes? What about people having the money? I know that you're going to be yeah. giving money to first-time buyers, but it's not just first-time buyers, is it? It's not. Well, it's sort of looking at it and, you know, yeah. inevitably, you know, there are eye-catching pieces of it, aren't there? And you mentioned right at the beginning of this interview, you know, constructing a conservatory in your house, you can go and do it. Houses will be blighted by that. What do you say to all those people who suddenly have a con conservatory virtually in their own, the other person's garden? Yeah, well, I think... Houses will be blighted by that. Well, you know, people will say, well, you're giving, you know, an advantage to the people who have assets, who have, you know, middle class families who have assets, who have, can afford to go and have those extension to their homes. Yeah, but these are the on to the criticism that you've been given by members of your own party. And I'll just read a couple of the quotes that I'm sure you are familiar with. Um, this is from uh, Lord Smith of Clifton um, saying that Nick Clegg was just a cork bobbing on the waves, no strategic vision at all. What's your response? Thanks for joining Thank us you. here on Breakfast this morning. Thank you. Let's see, time now is 18 minutes past eight. So, during the Paralympics, we've seen some very memorable inter-team rivalries amongst the British athletes. Uh, there's been the quest for gold between archers Daniel Brown and Mel Clark, an all-British final in the cycling tandem, and yesterday, oh yes, a battle in the pool between Charlotte Henshaw and Liz Johnson. Well, Charlotte took the silver, Liz bronze in the SB6 100-metre breaststroke, and they both join us now. Thanks to both of you for getting medals. But I want to start with you, Charlotte, first of all, because you were just pipped at the end, and it was so close. 28. Brilliant. Uh, now, interest rates are expected to stay at their historic low in an announcement made by the Bank of England later today. It's expected there won't be an increase in the amount of money being printed in the process known as quantitative easing. But a report out today says that the biggest losers of the bank's policies are the over 50s. With us now to tell us more, Paul Lewis. Are there sort of more worrying sort of implications as well? If they're suffering <laughs> that they don't spend money, therefore it has, you know, a sort of circular effect, doesn't it? Oh, yes. Yeah. So I mean, it's... Uh, let's see, 8.28 is the time coming up. BBC News Channel, of course. Here on Breakfast, uh, we'll be talking to tennis silver medalist Peter Norfolk and Andy Lapthorne. That's in about five minutes' time. But it's time now to get news travel and weather where you are. Most looking forward to what should we be looking out for this afternoon, do you think? Well, there's loads, isn't it? We'll wait up and watch it then. Thank you very Definitely much. Definitely do. Thanks Thank very much. you.
Uh, Mike, uh, from, of course, the Paralympics there, we're going to talk more about it now. He is known as the Quadfather, the British Paralympic flag bearer, who's won five medals over three games. Mm -hmm. but, but wheelchair tennis player Peter Norfolk has suggested he's played his last match. Oh, no. After he and Andy Lapthorne lost their quad doubles finals at Eton. Because you're both extremely competitive people, there'll be a bit of you that's thinking it should have been gold. I know the man beside you is called the Quad Father. Um, he's a bit of a legend, isn't he? What's it like playing with him? Andy, when you mentioned the age gap there, Peter started sniggering uh, already. Uh, tell us, Peter, uh, uh, what is the plan, Peter? Because everyone wants to know about whether you're going to carry on playing, are you going to go to Rio? What, where is your head as of this morning? Many, many congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank it's you all very good much. to see you on breakfast. Uh, 6, 8.45 is the time. Uh, of course, if you want to follow any more of today's action in the Paralympics. Being in charge of the London Film Festival off the back of the Paralympics, the Olympics, it does it feel like there is a kind of a momentum? And it, a, and it, it's in on the journey uh, that the King and Queen of England have made to go and really, I guess, um, covet the support. Film, it isn't is. It? Do you want to, we've got a clip we can see in a moment. Do you, do you want to just tell us? Set this is Tim, Tim Burton. Tim Burton, vision. It's, um, you know, Victor, this young boy who loses his beautiful dog Sparky in a car accident and then uses all of his inventive intelligence to, act, you know, bring him back. In the job, aren't you? I am indeed. So tell us what, what, what's new. What have you brought that's different? Because there are changes, aren't there, to the, if, the style and the way you're presenting in a way. Yeah. The tickets to go and see films. Absolutely. You, know, you don't have to be. Sometimes people think of film festivals as just for, you know, reviewers or movie critics or whatever. No, this is very much a festival that's for the public. You uh, stage acting for you is that is that the is that the cream? Is that the thing you love doing most? Because people, of course, as we mentioned before, you know you from a lot of television work. Yeah. You seem you seem like remarkably relaxed. I mean, some the the, the acting world is, is can be hard sometimes. I and mean, you you have patches in your work where you've not had work because often there's a sort of roller coaster ride with actors, but. Yeah, have you managed to sort of keep a, a steady furrow? Well, I've, I've uh, Natalie from Spandau, yeah, I've been, I went to Venezuela with him in Costa Rica, trekking. Okay, oh, so you nice. still see your we're, mates? We're good friends. That's yeah. nice, nice to know. Um, Lovely to see you here today. Thank you. Theatre Royal Drury Lane on Tuesday the 18th of December. Thank you. That's all from us this morning. Tomorrow, the actress Fiona Fullerton, who played a KGB double agent in a Bond movie, will be here to tell us about her friendship with the suspected spy and a completely different the punk band skunk and nancy will join us they're back together after more than 10 years from us though bye bye have a good day